Adding tallow to your briskets when you wrap them is a great way to make every slice taste better, and I use a lot of it. So it got me thinking, what's the best way to make tallow, and is there anything we can do to add more flavor to a brisket? I tested out a bunch of different methods, and I'm going to share them with you so you too can make super tallow at home. Let's get smoking. So the first question I had is what is the optimal size chunks of fat to render to get maximum yield in the shortest amount of time? I wanted to know if I needed to go through the effort of grinding my fat up in a meat grinder or if I could just get away with throwing my brisket trimmings in a pot and just leave it at that. Well, to test it out, I cubed up some brisket trimmings and rendered them for four hours. Then I ground up some of the brisket trimmings in my meat grinder and I rendered it for the same amount of time. The results? Well, I found that by far the percentage of liquid tallow per gram of starting fat, which I call yield, was much higher when the fat was ground up in a meat grinder. The cubed fat had a yield of 12 to 28%, while the ground fat had yields anywhere from 36 to 60%, much higher. My theory for this is that the ground up fat simply has more surface area, so it's easier to cook, it's exposed to more heat, the liquid is able to extract more tallow from each chunk of smaller piece of fat. It's kind of like how ground beef will cook a lot faster than a steak. So this is an easy one. By far the best sized chunks of fat to render are ground up in a meat grinder. And I would say followed by a close second is if you take your trimmings and then mince them up into as tiny pieces as you can get, that's probably okay if you don't have a meat grinder. The second question in my mind was, is it better to dry render or wet render tallow? Let me explain that. I used to do all my renderings in a crock pot slowly over the course of eight hours. But I noticed that once all of the water evaporated out of the fat, it started basically frying in its own fat. That resulted in some kind of off tastes that didn't taste very good. So I started comparing what I call dry methods, which is basically rendering in its own fat versus the wet rendering methods, which is rendering in water. Because I wanted to see what methods produce the best tasting tallow, the highest yield, and in the shortest amount of time. So to test this, I tried two dry rendering methods and two wet rendering methods methods and compared them to each other. The first two methods were on the stove top and on the smoker. This involves putting the fat in a pot on the stove or in the smoker with about a cup of water and boiling it for a few hours. The initial bit of water gives the fat a chance to render out some of the fat gently so it doesn't burn to the pot or the pan. And then the remaining part of the render is just with pure liquid fat because all the water has boiled off. I categorize these methods as dry rendering because most of the rendering time is in pure liquid fat at a higher rendering temperature. And this is because liquid fat can get to a much higher temperature than water because water is limited to 212 degrees or lower, the boiling point of water, well as liquid fat can get all the way up to, I think 400 degrees is the smoke point for beef tallow. Now the other two methods I used were stovetop boiling and the Instapot with eight cups of water added. These were the wet rendering methods. I categorize these as wet rendering methods because the rendering is all done in water and the rendering temperature is theoretically limited by the boiling point of water, like I just mentioned. What you're left with after straining the solid fat out is a layer of liquid tallow suspended on a layer of water. You let that tallow solidify in the fridge and then you just pop out the disc of solid fat and that's your tallow. So what's the best method? Well, I found that all of the methods produced pretty similar yields in the range of anywhere from 36 to 60%, but the dry rendering methods tended to produce a way more intense, beefy, and sometimes stinky off flavor. And if the temperature got too too high with the dry rendering methods, it actually fried in its own fat, and that resulted in the tallow tasting kind of like french fries, which was not really good as a compliment to brisket. In comparison, the wet rendering methods produce really white, pure tasting tallow without any off flavors. My theory for why this is the case is that the water, when you're doing wet rendering methods, tends to extract a lot of the water-soluble impurities that result in the beefiness and stinkiness of the tallow that you get at the end of the dry rendering because with dry rendering methods you don't have that water to extract all of those impurities so at the end of a wet rendering method whether it's on the stove top or the instapot you can just pop that disc of fat out and it's pure and all of that stinky polluted water is basically in the bottom of the pot and you just chuck it down the drain interestingly out of the wet rendering methods i found that the instapot performed the best it produced the highest yields in the shortest amount of time probably because it's pressurized and therefore rendering the tallow at around 240 degrees Fahrenheit instead of a lower 212 degrees Fahrenheit 
of boiling water. So in conclusion, the best method for getting the purest tallow is wet rendering, whether you're using a pot on the stove with boiling water or an Instapot, it produces the best tasting and cleanest results. What about the optimal time for rendering tallow? Should you render for an hour or four hours or longer? My original hypothesis was that the longer you render the tallow, the higher yield you're gonna get. But my stovetop rendering data didn't really show that result. Now this might be because I didn't control for the original fat weight in all of the tests and the starting weight of the fat was slightly different in each of the tests, but that actually led to some interesting insights as you can see here. While there was no relationship between time and yield percentage, there was a clear relationship between starting weight and yield, which was kind of strange. Basically, the more fat I rendered, the higher percentage of yield I got in the end. Now, my theory for why this might be the case is that when you start with more fat in the beginning of the rendering, you're producing a lot more liquid fat and it's floating on the surface of the water. And also the original solid liquid fat is floating on the surface of the water. So it's basically rendering in its own fat with the water below it. And because fat is obviously fat soluble, the more liquid fat you have, the better it's able to extract more fat. And I think that's why I'm seeing that the more fat you add at the beginning, the more yield percentage you get at the end. That being said, there was a relationship in the Instapot tests and it was clear that I was getting a higher yield percentage with the two hour render instead of the one hour render. So based on these tests, I would recommend rendering for at least two hours, whether you're boiling in a pot on the stove or using an Instapot, and I would use as much fat as possible. What I usually do is I put in eight cups of water to every Every two to three pounds of fat. Now that I'd found a way to quickly render really pure tallow, I wanted to do some experiments to see if I could make the tallow taste even more pure without any hint of beefiness or stinkiness at all. So I turned to a soap making forum and I found a post by Lion Princess 00. She boils her tallow multiple times while discarding the water each time and also adds salt to the water to remove impurities. So I tried this method and did some tests where I boiled the tallow multiple times, each time letting the fat solidified, dumping the dirty water, then boiling again up to three times. I also added salt every time I did this. When I compared the double and the triple boiled tallows to just a single boiled tallow, I didn't really notice a difference in flavor. And even with the salt added, I didn't really taste a difference. So that got me thinking of other ingredients that I could add to potentially purify the tallow and make it more clean tasting. And I thought about this thing called sodium bentonite. It's a type of clay and sometimes people use it to purify water. Water. I mean, they use it in all sorts of products like face masks and you ingest it and it removes impurities from your digestive system. So I picked some up from Amazon and I decided to try it out even though I was pretty sure it wasn't gonna work. And here were the results. It looks pretty white, a lot whiter than I'm used to. Let's see if it tastes any more pure. Actually, okay, sorry, I thought I was just gonna throw this right in the garbage, but this actually uh, might've worked. And if you look in the water in the bottom, you can see all the clay has kind of settled down there. And there's not much left in the tallow anymore. Although the tallow that I just tried did taste kind of clay-y. So I don't know. Let's try a little bit more. Eh, this might have actually worked. Uh huh. So I can't really taste any beef flavor at all, interestingly. So it tastes like the bentonite has done something. It's purified the taste, but I am getting a little bit of grittiness. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this cake of purified tallow and I'm going to boil it again to remove any lingering bentonite clay that might be in here. Bentonite clay is totally food safe. In fact, I got a food safe product of, sod of sodium bentonite. So it's not gonna hurt you, but we don't wanna create any off flavors, obviously, when we're using this to wrap our brisket. So I'm gonna boil this up and see if it tastes any more pure. Now, I did go ahead and boil it again, and then I solidified the fat and I tasted it. And when I tasted it again, it kinda of tasted a little bit earthy and kinda of gritty, and you could definitely taste that there was something off in it. So as could be expected, when you're basically rendering tallow in something that's like dirt, it's probably not gonna taste very good. And because of those off flavors, I wouldn't recommend this method. Even though the flavors are really pure, it still had this gritty weird flavor. So definitely not recommended. Okay, moving on, what about smoked tallow? Does smoking your fat or your tallow make the tallow taste better? A lot of people like to put their brisket trimmings in the smoker and let it render while they smoke their brisket. What they're left with is a liquid tallow with an intense smoky flavor. I tried this out 
and I think it's far too easy to burn the fat and produce those fried French fry type off flavors in the tallow. So what I'd recommend if you try this is wet rendering the tallow first and then smoking the liquid tallow in your smoker. The second thing I found is that it's way too easy to over smoke the tallow. I smoked mine for around six hours and the smoke flavor was way too intense, like dousing the brisket in liquid smoke. If you've ever had a nice scotch that has a nice peaty kind of smoky flavor, you know that less is more when it comes to that kind of taste. So what I like to do is just smoke the tallow for about two hours just to give it a light kiss of smoke. And that seems to be enough. If you over smoke the tallow, it just gets way too overpowering and it's going to overpower the natural flavor of your brisket with too much smoke flavor. But it really is personal preference. If you like to go heavy on the smoke flavor, then feel free to smoke your tallow for eight to 12 hours along with your brisket. Just understand that it's gonna be really smoky. And finally, I wanted to know whether I could enhance the flavor of tallow by adding salt to make salted tallow. This seems like a pretty simple concept. Just sprinkle some salt in your tallow and you have salted tallow, right? Well, it's not that simple. Salt is not fat soluble. So if you put it in liquid fat, it'll just kind of sink to the bottom like a stone dropped in a pond. It doesn't dissolve in fat like it does in water. So in order to make salted tallow, there needs to be water in the fat. The problem with that is that water and fat also don't like each other. They tend to separate. So in order to keep them together, we need to emulsify them by blending fat and salty water together for a few minutes. The problem with that is that the emulsion doesn't stay together over time. So if you put it in the fridge or if you wrap a brisket with it, the water will separate from the fat eventually. So I turned to my Patreon community for a solution and Al from Big Al's Barbecue suggested using xanthan gum. It's an ingredient in a lot of commercial sauces and a lot of people that make homemade hot sauces use it. And what it does is it keeps ingredients in sauces from separating to make them shelf stable. So I tried it out by adding a cup of tallow, a half a cup of water, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon of xanthan gum to a blender. I blended it for 30 seconds to emulsify it and then I refrigerated it. After a few hours, I checked on it and lo and behold, it actually worked. The emulsion was stable and not separating. I tried it on some slices of brisket and it added a nice saltiness to the tallow that actually tasted really good. A lot of people say that tallow can take away from the saltiness of the beef, so this kind of adds that extra saltiness back in. That being said, the salted tallow had a bit of a saucy consistency from the water and xanthan gum, so I'm not really ready to wholesale adopt it right now. Maybe after some experimentation, I'll find a ratio that tastes more oily and less saucy. But a big thanks to Big Al from Big Al's Barbecue for the recommendation. He's got an awesome YouTube channel that honestly has better produced content than mine. So I'm gonna link it in the description section below. Please go check him out. Please give him a subscribe and show him some love. I know he'll really appreciate it and I know you'll enjoy the content. So moving on from my xanthan gum experiment, I still wanted to create a tallow with a bit of salt in it. So I tried mixing tallow with salted butter. I already mix my tallow with clarified butter before adding it to my brisket, so this seemed like a logical progression. Unlike pure fat, salted butter has water in it so it can hold onto salt, and it's already formed into a stable emulsion when you buy it. It's also a lot easier to find than xanthan gum. So all I needed to do was melt a cup of salted butter with a cup of tallow on very low heat, not going above 100 degrees so we don't break the emulsion. Then I stir it until it's thoroughly mixed, and it creates a nice salted tallow butter blend that adds a ton of flavor to brisket. So I think I'm gonna use this blend going forward when I wrap my briskets. In conclusion, what is the best way to make tallow. Well, I'd highly recommend getting a meat grinder and grinding up your pure fat trimmings that you get from your brisket. Or if you don't have a meat grinder, then mincing up the fat trimmings as small as possible and then wet rendering them, whether it's on a stovetop with a pot or in an Instapot with eight cups of water to every two to three pounds of fat. You're gonna wanna render it for at least two hours and then you're going to put it in the fridge. You're gonna pop that fat disc or that solid layer of fat off the top. You'll flip it over, scrape that brown stuff off the bottom if there is any, and then you can melt it again and put it in whatever storage container that you want. If you wanna add a little bit of extra flavor to your tallow, you can put it in the smoker for, I would say maybe two hours just to add a light kiss of smoke. And if you want to add some saltiness and butteriness to your tallow, you can add a cup of salted butter for every cup of tallow. You slowly heat that mixture on the stove, not going above 100 degrees Fahrenheit 
tight so you don't break the emulsion. And then you can use that tallow mixture on your brisket and it's gonna make it taste absolutely amazing. But I'd love to hear from you guys. What methods do you use to render your tallow and what are the results? And would you use the method from this video? I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video entertaining. And if you wanna get more involved in the Smoke Trails Barbecue community, join my Patreon. So many smart people there that are always giving me ideas and we're workshopping things and trying to figure things out. I wouldn't be able to produce a lot of the ideas that I have for these videos if I didn't have that sounding board from my Patreon community. So thank you guys from my Patreon community. You guys are awesome. The other thing you can do is you can follow me on Instagram. There's a Smoke Trails Barbecue Nerd Facebook page. So there's a lot of ways to get involved. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video and happy smoking.